Guys, so today I'm fulfilling a couple requests. Had some people ask about seeing I2P on the Pine phone. I have that right here. I have it open to the I2P Plus router. So this is open in NetSurf. And if you have a regular Pine phone original, I suggest using something like NetSurf for a few reasons. And the main one is because it has a much lower amount of memory usage. And as we know, Java's pretty heavy. And I'm probably the only guy at the gym that's on I2P. I'm on the bike right now. So I have my Pine tab up on the bike. As you can see, fits nicely right here. And uh, if I had a laptop, obviously I wouldn't have any way of using it. So love the Pine tab. It's a great device. Excited to see what happens with the Pine tab 2, which was announced recently. And uh, we're on I2P now. So if you're interested in trying this on your Pine phone or any other Linux device, all Linux devices can follow my tutorials on setting up, getting started with I2P is one of the videos. The other one is using out proxies for anonymous internet browsing. And uh, what we have open is NetSurf because it has low memory usage. Once you start the I2P router, then you're going to want to go to the preferences. You'll go down here. Go to preferences. As you can see, it's pretty snappy. So on the Pine phone, you got to consider your memory, how much RAM you have, processor, power, all that. And uh, you'll want to go to your network settings, set it to manual, no authentication, then port 4444, host 127.0.0.1. And then another tip if you want to be even safer, you can disable JavaScript by not checking off enable JavaScript. But certain things need JavaScript, but for your anonymity protection, you should consider that JavaScript has been used to de-anonymize different users on Tor browser vulnerabilities in the past. And if you want to prevent that and you don't need JavaScript, make sure to disable it when you're using I2P. And uh, you may want to use different browsers. I've mentioned this. Set up a different profile. But if you really want to be compartmentalizing your I2P usage from your normal browsing, go ahead and use a completely different browser. There's also other considerations that I'm going to be doing a post on that coming up. So make sure to follow the blog at buymeacoffee.com slash politictech. And uh, it's free to follow. You can follow, get post by email. And uh, we'll go over more safety on Libre Wolf and things like that because I have a couple other ideas that I'd like to share with you guys. So once you've set that up with that, you can hit close. Then what you're going to want to do is go to localhost colon 7667. That is going to take you to the I2P router console. Now, the thing to keep in mind is it won't accept 127.0.0.1. You have to actually type localhost. It's not a big deal. You can set your home page to that in the preferences as well. And then once you do that, you'll hit proceed. It loads a whole lot better than on Firefox or LibreWolf because of the fact that this is, it's the same underlying hardware as the original Pine phone. And that's one reason I'm showing the Pine tab and why you'll notice in some of my videos about the Pine phone, I'll use the Pine tab just because it's the same device with a bigger screen, much easier to do videos on. And you know, it's no problem using I2P on your Pine phone. You know, especially if you're using NetSurf, you'll notice the memory usage is, you know, it's not even a comparison. So, you know, keep that in mind with the whole thing with JavaScript and keep in mind and be mindful of your applications. You know, you may even want to have a dedicated I2P device. I've talked about this in the past, you know, different ways to change, you know, your unique fingerprints is using different applications which uses different metadata and then also you can even use different devices which makes it a whole lot easier because if you if you consolidate all of your activity into a dedicated device you don't have to worry about all the other things that normally people set up countless different extensions countless different uh, privacy tools but if you use a dedicated device, you don't have to worry about those things and you can just, you know, relegate everything into that single device. So wanted to show that. Of course, I got my, you know, 
pine time. It's got the heart rate monitor. So I'm trying to fulfill a couple of requests today. I'm getting part of, you know, my vlog life here. I'm also bringing in, you know, of course, pine devices that I like to use. And these are some of the devices I use more than any other device. I just don't always bring them out on video because it's a lot more difficult for people to see what I'm doing. I can pull up a terminal and do an SSH over to the Pine phone, and it's a lot easier to do tutorials that way. And it also allows people who don't have one to follow along as well. But really, all my tutorials are for the Pine phone as well. So that's something to keep in mind when you watch my videos. I'm always trying to share new ways that people can use their devices in different ways. We've talked about using Tor Browser on the Pine phone as well in the past. I'm just gonna have to stop pedaling. It's too difficult to talk. But uh, yeah, it's very nice to have something nice and compact that I can fit in my pocket with cellular modem and all the other uh, terminal supplies that I want. And then of course, you know, the Pine tab with the internal SDR. That's why I had to stick it upside down because if I put it right side up, it's not gonna fit on this ledge here because of the internal SDR and the uh, port right there would get in the way. So this is another option for you if you wanna try out NetSurf. It's a super light browser, awesome browser. Check it out, it's a great option for I2P. You know, especially for EAP sites, I don't suggest as much for OutProxy with NetSurf because it is very unique. And uh, if you mix, you know, your other browsing with that, and, and we'll discuss more about what I mean by that. So as you can see, it handles very well. So I also wanted to demonstrate that. You know, of course, there's going to be a lot of, you know, a lot of memory usage with the Java I2P router, but still works very well you don't have any problems navigating everything you know go up here configure your browser if you're using NetSurf also want to spread the good news about NetSurf because NetSurf is a great it's perfect for the Pine phone if you have a low memory a low resource device this is a perfect browser for you so I highly suggest trying that out make sure to check out my tutorials on I2P and uh, I'll be back later to talk more about your safety on I2P as well. I2P is a really unique protocol platform. We're looking at the forum right now. So it handles well on the Pine tab and Pine phone. Handles the same on the Pine phone. Try this out. Follow my earlier tutorials. Getting started with I2P and I2P out proxy tutorials. Uh, those were done over the last couple weeks in the I2P series. This is yet another video in the I2P series fulfilling a request to show it on Pine devices. That was something someone commented on Odyssey video, on my I2P Odyssey video. And I wanted to fulfill that and show that you can use I2P on the Pine phone. You can use it on other Pine devices. All my tutorials, like I said, they're for all Linux devices. So if you watch it and I'm not using one, you know, it's just because it's easier to record on the computer. I can always SSH in, and a lot of times I do do tutorials that are on the Pine phone, but they're through SSH. Make sure you like this video, guys. Really makes a big difference. Likes go a long way in helping the channel videos get promoted. Really appreciate people who take the time to like, subscribe with the bell and uh, makes a big difference. Comments help the channel. Everything helps. Like the video, share it, and I'll be back later with more on Pine Phone, open source, how to protect your security and privacy.